Welcome to day two of my Zero to Hero challenge in Albion Online. If you haven't watched day one yet, go do that first because I'll be jumping straight into the action after a small recap. On the first day, I made a new character and played on it for about five hours. And within that time, I reached tier seven Reva. I made about three million silver and I reached level 29 on my specializations. I also died three times and I didn't kill anyone yet. Today you'll get to see everything that happened on day 2, which led to even higher specializations, more silver and more PvP action. I started my day by doing some tier 7 solo dungeons in 4.2 gear. I feel like when you are just starting out, doing solo dungeons is a great way to progress in both silver and fame. So if I were a new player, I'd start my days by doing a handful of solo dungeons. Which is why, at this point in this challenge, I do exactly that. I do know a lot of people complain about the drops from solo dungeons, but in my experience, it's alright really, considering the content is rather safe because the entrance disappears from the map after some time, the fame is pretty decent. As for the loot, it is pretty random, but over the course of many dungeons, you will have an average, and from my experience, the average ain't that bad as long as you stick to tier 6 dungeons or higher in the black zones. I also want to share that it's alright to fail in solo dungeons from time to time. You can see in this clip that I also struggle sometimes with certain bosses, which is normal because I am on a new character with relatively low gear whilst doing tier 7 content. But I often find positive results in trying different things such as swapping out some skills or trying a different approach to the battle. If you struggle continuously however, you may want to check the effectiveness of your build or do content that's a tier lower. After doing a total of 3 tier 7 dungeons in the Outlands, this is the inventory I end up with, so about 750k in total. This covers my loadout 4 times over, so I definitely want to do a reset now, which means I go back to town and secure my loot. You can stash the things you might need in your bank if you want to, but personally I don't like hoarding, so I put everything as a sell order on the marketplace. I also repair my gear, which completes my reset. Now I've done my daily share of progress, both in silver and fame, I feel like I want to do something new with this character, not only for my own pleasure to swap things up, but also to showcase you what your possibilities are in Albion Online, which is why I decided to do Corrupted Dungeons in the Yellow Zones, as it makes for fame, silver, and even a bit of PvP action, whilst not risking anything. If you do the Corrupted Dungeons in the Red and Black Zones, you will lose everything you have when you die, but in the yellow zones, the corrupted dungeons are fully safe and can be used as a training tool whilst still progressing your character. Important to know is that corrupted dungeons have an item power cap which changes based on the level you are doing. Since I will be doing hunter level, which are the safe ones in the yellow zone, I want to hit the soft IP cap of 900. In my character's current state, a 4.2 set should be enough for that. Now, since I am going for potential PvP action, I do want to swap some things in my build to become more effective in this content. First of all, I trade my Limhurst Cape for a Bridgewatch Cape. Limhurst was to sustain energy in solo dungeons and won't do anything for my build in PvP. A Bridgewatch Cape, on the other hand, will slow my enemies and apply a big debuff on them, which gives me a big advantage at the start of the fight. I also take Beast 2 for more damage as my food and lower level Gigantify potions as a consumable just in case I need them. I advise when doing hunter level corrupted dungeons you keep it budget as the loot isn't as great as Stalker or Hunter and you are here to make positive progress, so no need to go crazy on your potions whatsoever. The build I'm using concludes to be very strong in the hunter level, not only for the PvE but also PvP, where I win a total of 4 matches and lose none of them. Not only does the light crossbow have one of the best AoE clears in the game, but it also has a fair bit of damage and kiting potential, which makes for a very strong duo in the hunter level. After my run, I ended up with 180k in items and 80k in silver bags. 
I used some of my silver bags during my run, which is why you don't see them right now, but in total I gained about 260k. I also farmed a fair bit of fame whilst doing this, which makes this content a safe way of progressing your character. This goes for anyone. It's not the fastest way, although the drops depend on your luck, but it is a safe way to progress. And as I said before, it makes for good PvP practice, which is important as well. Back to town for a reset and time to slap on a cheap 4.1 set to clown around in the black zone. One thing new players have difficulties with is enjoying the different possibilities within the game, because they are so caught up in progressing and catching up, whilst long term none of that really matters. You sometimes have to put a break on the mindless grind and enjoy the game for what it is, which is something you can do with a tiny bit of silver. Whether this is sabotaging other players' progress and stealing their loot, or bullying them from the high ground. Although I ended up dying for the fourth time on this character without having killed anyone yet, I had a good laugh doing this. Time to slap on another 4.1 set and go out once again. As I look around for action, I get another cop drop and shortly after I see people ganking near the exit. Now since I have a bubble and all my skills up and I'm seconds away from the exit, I decide to do some clowning here as well by stealing the loot of their victim. This of course pisses them off and makes them turn on me. I soak up the damage by using my cleric rope and go through to the other side. Here we have a smart ass waiting for me, but my ass is even smarter, so I just take the shrine to become fully invisible. Now although I only have 100k worth of gains at this point, I decide to do a reset since I am in the realm gate area and I already took the invisibility shrine. Although it is very little, it does cover my previous set loss and will cover my current set loss at the same time. So I'm basically playing with a free set from here on. I go out again and become the victim of someone else clowning around this time, which I guess is a great example of karma. But I'm too good to give up loot, so I quickly secure it and get away. As you are roaming in the black zones, just keep killing evolved mobs, jump into random solo dungeons, and just keep progressing by doing whatever. This way, you will make both silver and fame. As long as you are doing something in Albion Online, you will move forward. And as you can see, you don't need an 8.3 set to make this happen. I'm still in my 4.1 set that cost me about 50k silver. After doing some content, I spot roses on an evolved mob, which I try to gank but fail. So I mount back up and follow him. He's playing a one-handed first off build, which has the potential to one-shot someone. Luckily, I can counter that pretty hard as I have a cleric rope, guardian helmet, and even assassin shoes, which are all very strong against this build. I follow him inside in the dungeon and get my first PvP kill on my zero to hero character. I just continue grinding after my first kill because the loot I got wasn't much and as I jump into a random solo dungeon I see two players in there. I feel brave and powerful because I just had my first PvP kill so I try to 1v2 here but alas. As I head back to the realm gate I see my second victim and as he sees me he knows I'm a certified killer and doesn't even try anymore. I guess the word in bridge watch spreads fast. About 200k worth of gains at this point, which is 4 new sets, so a good time to reset once again. I want to change up the scenery because I've done quite a bit of solo dungeons, evolved mobs and clowning around today, which is why I go to the roads of Avalon. Here you want to farm green chests that have a wave of mobs with the final boss that's guarding a chest. You have to kill all the mobs and the boss around the camp to open the chest. These once again come in four different rarities and I get an uncommon one that nets me 170k which is a good chunk of silver in a very short time. The fame from these mobs is very great as well, so very good content in general. For some reason I decided to go back after doing only one camp and despite seeing the gankers I tried to pass because they are right at the gate, which was a very ignorant decision by me that kills me for the fifth time on this character. I gear up once again in a cheap 4.1 set and this time see an AFK right as I enter the black zone. Could be bait, but I don't have much to lose anyway, 
so I just kill him and get going. I end up in the roads of Avalon once again and pick a fight with spear user LGT Sheep. Because I underestimate his damage and don't use my helmet in time, I end up dying for the sixth time. I go back to farm chests and this time get a common chest that rewards me with a 7.1 royal rope which really shows that loot is fully random in this game and you can get big drops when you least expect it. My one and only goal right now is to secure this loot which is why I head back to town. After securing I go back out and see a spear user LGT sheep which just killed me looting a chest. I didn't realize it was a gold one at first, but I bullied him away from the chest, which still has 700k in it. He tries to contest me for it, and I almost managed to kill him, but because I'm on the wrong skills on my boot, I don't have enough mobility to catch up, which was very unfortunate. Who knows how much he looted already, as we are talking about a legendary chest here, which has huge silver potential. Nonetheless, I got a good chunk of loot because of this encounter, which means I have to secure it once again. 500k here, 500k there, it adds up real fast. Even if it's only 100k that you secure, it means progress. So I really advise you to bank smartly based on your economy. 500k at this point is a huge deal for my character, and if you're new, it is for you as well. This time I see victim number 4 farming a mob which becomes an easy kill. After that I continue to the roads to kill some dire wolves to try my luck in getting a cup. No luck there, but I do spot multiple fading insights somewhere else on the roads which makes for good pain. I then see a blob on a big golden chest somewhere on the roads which is a pretty rare sight nowadays and decide to do some clowning around once again. I then enter a solo dungeon on the roads which have huge bonus multipliers compared to other solo dungeons. The entrance of this one remains open as long as someone's inside which makes it very risky to clear. Right after I kill the final boss I get dived by a court 1990 who's using bolt casters. This one has insane single target damage and can 100 to 0 someone in the blink of an eye. I manage to escape in a miraculous way and I change my abilities to 1v1 him which seems to be going in my favor for the longest time. I chase him back all the way to the boss room and at this point I'm 65% health and he is at 25% health. I drop my bomb on him and completely underestimate his ability to turn this fight around which is when he silences me and uses his ultimate ability to burst me down to zero. Very well played by him and a big reminder, you should never underestimate the ability of other players. I do end up with 92k in silver bags once I'm back in town, which covers the set I lose and one extra, so it's not bad at all. Make another set, go out to roads once again to farm fame and loot and hit Elder Reaver. I'm only on my second day on this character and I've already hit max level Reaver. I can now start doing year 8 content which is the highest level content within the game. After clearing one more chest, I go back to town to wrap up the day. Another day I played about 5 hours, and not only did I have plenty of fun, but I had great progress as well. I'm 6k into my weekly conquerors challenge, and have 4k favor. My masteries are at level 62, and specializations at 40 already, which makes for almost 100 item power bonus, which is an entire tier of bonuses. I also have about 2 million in sell orders and 3.4 million flat silver for a total of 5.5 million, which honestly, altogether, I think is very huge for a 2 day old character. My new character already feels very strong at this point and will become even stronger and richer on day 3. Stay tuned for the final episode where you will see the full potential of a 3 day old character. Not only will we make even more progress and reach enough gains to buy premium, but we'll also delve into more risky content. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon in episode 3.